Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We cover everything Major League from spring training to the World Series. We've got your favorite club covered from New York to Boston to L.A. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malinoff, and with me is Mark Souza. We are going to be talking about... Politics. No. Oh. God, no. I haven't talked about politics in years. Anyways, we're moving on to the Giants getting a new president of baseball operations who is an enemy to them in the L.A. area. We'll get more on that later. The next segment we'll do is uh, free agents that are going to be available this season, which is a pretty big free agency pool, if you ask me. Then we're going to be talking about gold glove winners, and then anything else we need to talk about will be at the end of the, the fourth segment. So let's get right into it. You have the all the updates on this, don't you, on the uh, Giants move of president operations? Uh, I do. I do. So... As we know, the midterm elections were yesterday in a hot political climate, and the Giants, in a political yeah, I move, talk about politics for a second. I'm like, stop. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I got this. In a political move, they steal one of their adversaries, and they have him join their team, Farhan Zaidi Brilliant. from the Los Angeles Dodgers. You will know him as the general manager of the Dodgers for the last three years. A man who has oversaw. The building of a farm system, a strong an elite, twenty-five an man elite farm system. Yes, a strong twenty-five man roster, a strong forty-man roster. We see the Dodgers lose players to injuries. They get other players that are just as capable, and um, that man, the brains behind the Dodgers operation, he is heading north to join the rival San Francisco Giants front office. He will take the role as uh, president of baseball operations, which means he will now hire a general manager to sit. He basically him. runs everything that happens. Yes. Yes. So the Giants have done some reshuffling in their front office. They're looking to have a fresh approach and they have sought after what one one of the better minds in baseball, according to you know baseball analysts, uh, I think most uh, baseball insiders would agree that Farhan Zaidi is regarded as one of the best and brightest in the business going at the moment. We saw him get his start as an assistant to Billy Bean and the Oakland Athletics before making that unprecedented move to the Dodgers, going from an assistant to all of a sudden the general manager of one of the biggest clubs with the biggest payrolls in baseball. He was a great success and as the he Dodgers. He succeeded big time. Mm -hmm. The and Dodgers going, have made the last two World Series. And he's going to a team that's like not that uh, below them in money-wise. They have The Giants have plenty of money, so he's like not going to a whole new the type of system where he has to be careful with money. He's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there his payroll will be very similar. In fact, one could argue that the Giants will probably be spending more money than the Dodgers will for the next few years because the Giants made it a point this year to get under the luxury tax where they didn't have to pay the repeaters. They didn't make a luxury tax, surprisingly. Yeah, they, they, they got underneath the repeaters tax, so they didn't have to play, pay that bloated uh, tax this year. They were able to take away the previous years and... Um, People say that they will be making a run at some big name free agents. We'll get into that in a minute. But Jeff, what do you think about this move for the Giants? Obviously, as fans, as people who follow the sport, if we're not in the front office, it's really hard to see what people do on a day to day basis. It's really hard to see what Farhan Zaidi does every day. But from just a perspective of, so should we stalk him? No, no. no. But from a perspective of on the outside looking in, as we all are. Uh, what do you think of this move? Do you think it's a good move? Oh, it's a great move. Mm -hmm. Like this guy is is not maybe the 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 main reason 
that the Dodgers are as good as they are right now. Yeah, he developed so many great players and all in everything that has happened. It's all because of him, and mm-hmm. he's going to a team with the same, roughly the same payroll and the same ambitions and the same like we'll spend money to win. And this is a huge turning point for the Giants. This was a like firing their general manager was maybe the best decision they made because it just he it looked like he was getting two older players and it was just the the money was getting really ridiculous with the contracts he was getting overall this is get a turnaround the giants i feel like this is a mm-hmm. this is going to be a multi-year um a multi-year plan but i think we'll see the giants back in the world series sooner rather than later with this with this new head of the operations mm-hmm. yeah and you know the last four years aidi has been working for the dodgers and we just talked about it they've had tremendous success i mean obviously they didn't win a world series but they if got you, there. He yeah, got them there. When you're not a player and you're somebody making decisions and personnel and things like that, all you can really do is provide the team the best opportunity. And when you get there two years in a row and you continue to dominate your division year in and year out, it says something about the personnel department. It says something about President Andrew Friedman for the Dodgers. We'll see if Zaidi was how influential he was with the Dodgers because We'll see if the Giants take a different approach. We know Zaidi is a analytics guy, which not to say that the Giants' previous general manager, Bobby Evans, wasn't, but he wasn't regarded as such as someone like that. Zaidi comes in with an analytics approach. He's only 41 years old, which is very interesting. He's very young to be president of baseball operations. Hey, when you do something right, you're going to get um, big opportunities even at a young age. I mean, mm-hmm. And he's young, so, I mean, it's possible that he could be in this role for 15, 20 years. I mean, maybe he a takes A million over. years. Maybe he takes over for a Sabian down the road. Um, the Giants president, of course. So Yeah. It's you, a, you mean that was probably best. Yeah. That. Yeah. So it sounded like you said Saban. Like, why would he go to <laughs> Dick Saban in the Alabama Crimson Tide? Yeah, Brian Sabian. So um, I think it's a big get for the Giants, honestly. Uh, it's just hearing from people like Buster Olney and other people who live and breathe baseball, it just sounds like this was not a home run, but a grand slam type of hire. So we'll see what the future holds for the Giants. So I want to talk about the Giants a little bit. Bryce Harper. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Sounds like uh, there's a report out there that Bryce Harper turned down a mega offer from the Nationals, which I'm sure that happened. I don't know if it was really $300 million. I don't know if it's $400 million. We'll see. But I think that happened. I think the Nationals gave it their best shot. Bryce Harper all of a sudden is looking at a few teams. I think you have the White Sox and the Phillies who are said to be in on Harper. But the Giants are also in on Harper. I don't believe the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Red Sox are in on Harper. Nationals are one of the top six teams in payroll, but he already said no to them. Are the Giants all of a sudden the front runner to land Bryce Harper? As of right now, probably. If the if the president says I will pay any amount of money, just get him. That's basically what he is saying. Yeah, they're the they're the front runner. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how much money that's going to be. It's going to be probably some- three fifty. You think it's not going to be four hundred? Because I, I, I said it. I said in uh, in a while ago that oh no way he's getting four hundred. Then I heard the Nationals contract they offered him. I can see him getting four hundred, maybe even more. Maybe three fifty at the least. I don't know. Uh, Man, I wish I was a baseball. So player. here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I would say that four hundred million is possible if the big wigs were involved. But since the Yankees. The Dodgers and the Red Sox are George out. George Washington? Washington is one of the top six in payroll every single year, and they're out. So four of the top six are so out. I'm just going to let that happen. So with that being said, it kind of drives down the price a little bit, don't you think? Like if Because there's less competition out there. So it's the White Sox, Phillies, and the Giants, it sounds like, who will be offering the most money. I don't think the Cubs are in. The Cubs, we've heard conflicting reports. We've seen... 
we've seen uh, baseball minds say that they're in. Some say they're not going to spend nearly that much for one player because they do have a lot of good players on that team. Um, but we know Bryce Harper and Chris Bryant are good buddies. I I don't know what to say if the Cubs are in and out. But I don't think he's like LeBron James where he wants to play with his friends. I think it's more of a wants to win a championship now. Yeah, but I mean the Cubs would be a good team to join. If you well, yeah, to. absolutely. But I think uh, they're still like how they've been playing the Cubs have. They're kind of on a decline now. But the Cubs would offer the, him the opportunity to play for a great franchise with his buddy with as good a chance to win a World Series. Because if we, would, if we think about the other teams that are involved, the Giants – Phillies and White Sox, are they any closer to winning a championship than the Giants? I'm pretty sure, I'm, or the Cubs, excuse me. I'm pretty sure. I feel the, like the Giants and Cubs are probably closer than we think. Yeah, but the Cubs are in just a better spot, though, right? Absolutely, 100% yeah. agree. So. But I'm saying that the Giants had, like, I don't see the White Sox winning a World Series the next five, ten years. I see the Giants in the World Series the next five years. I can't see Bryce Harper playing in Chicago and not playing for the Cubs. Like, that would, that seems weird. But he's a West Coast guy, like we were saying before. Yeah, he's from Vegas. So, I mean... There's it's... no really baseball teams in Vegas, so he was probably a Bay Area fan. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think Dodgers would be the closest for proximity. Um but they don't I, have, I don't. I don't think they have the money. for They him. don't have the. They're not going after him. That's they what, can't that, even I, keep that, a shot. They have him, the money so. for him, but that's going to be so much on the luxury tax. It's, it's just gonna, against their mo recently, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So they could. I mean, if they do, their luxury tax will be through the roof. Big time. Big time. So, are the Giants front runner? I'm going to say them and Philadelphia. Philadelphia has a nice little up and coming team, but um, an interesting. But they were relentless in getting him or Machado. Yeah, and it sounds like the Phillies want both of them. It looks like they're in on both. They have the space in between them and the luxury tax to do it. I think mm -hmm. so. It's a possibility, but I don't think they're going to get both. They might get one. I think they're going to get Machado. That would be crazy. If they get both, they win the off season. But I think they're going to get Machado and not Harper. That's my prediction. Yeah, possibly. Um, so there was news from Buster Olney this week that Giants majority owner Charles Johnson, he is a huge Bryce Harper fan, and it sounds like he's willing to do whatever it takes to get Harper. And we know that the Giants were in on Stanton last year. We know that they engaged with talks. They it almost happened, people. but Stanton said no because he was what a, grew up. A, he grew up a Dodgers fan. Was that the reason? Again, I, like I don't did, remember exactly. He didn't like the Giants as a kid or something like that. I know that was one of the reasons. He was like, I don't see myself as a Giant because I grew up not liking them. I'm like, all right, I understand that. Because if I was like, if I was a <laughs> Giants fan, I almost got signed with the Dodgers. I'd be like, I don't want to really want to I mean, play I guess, the Dodgers. You I know guess what I mean? that would be a tiebreaker. <laughs> he had options, so it doesn't matter. He went to the Yankees. He, yeah, probably, went he, to the, he probably went to the best situation because the Yankees have more money than any of us can count to. Mm -hmm. So Six. We know the Giants were in on Stanton, and it was mostly we we hear that it was because of this owner Charles Johnson who really wanted to bring a big name to the Giants last year. But now it sounds like from what Buster Olney has said, the Giants are all in on Harper. I can see it happening. I really can. I know. Is there that, is, there, is there a percentage chance of like? Is there a uh, what's the word? I would say it's fifty percent Giants right now, and I would say the other fifty percent is mix of three or four teams. I'll look up favorite to land Harper. I, and I bet the Giants are not the. You know, favorite. I went to a middle school called Harper. That means absolutely nothing for our listeners. Just it's a fun fact. Fun fact, guys. Uh, Jeff went to a middle school named Harper. Harper Junior High. Okay. Yeah, I went to junior high too, seventh and eighth. Not not no sixth, seventh and eighth. As so. of October twenty ninth of this year, uh, the Cubs are plus three hundred. Mm -hmm. The Nationals are plus four hundred, which I think they're done. They're negative. Yeah, and the Giants are plus seven fifty. Are they third? They are third. See, and the Nationals he turned down. The Cubs, I don't think they're in. I think the Cubs are out of Bryce Harper. The Phillies are even. So the Phillies have the biggest odds to win this. Mm, yeah, Phillies. I, the reading, the little list that gave me was a little off. But yeah, the Phillies are the best. So the positive. Phillies are the number one odds. The Angels and Red Sox are plus 1,500. So I guess technically they're in. The Dodgers are 850. Yankees are 800. But it's between the Phillies, the Cubs, and the Giants at the moment. 
Yeah, I mean the as Phillies. Of, I think are going to get this, one of the two. As of this reading from a twenty October twenty ninth poll, or not poll, but a odds oh, maker. If you're Bryce Harper, and you can pick between Philadelphia and San Francisco, where do you go? To live. I'm probably going to pick San Francisco to live because it's probably a nicer area to live in. What? But the taxes are really high, too. I don't think you're terribly concerned when you're making $350 million about about that. But um, So plus tax, you probably are going to get 320 of it. <laughs> so which, if you're Bryce Harper, though, which franchise do you have more confidence in in building a championship team, the Giants or the Phillies? Ah. Uh. Phillies are a young team and building. They're probably looking better in the future than the Giants are, in all honesty, because the Giants still have a lot of old players there. I mean, they have Evan Longoria, for goodness sake. But I'm going to go on a limb and say that the, 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 the Phillies are probably looking better in the long run. The Phillies? Because they're young. They're a young, up-and-coming team, like you said, and they have youth. They have speed. They have just a great – they're getting their farm system together. Mm -hmm. It just seems like a future team. But when you're looking at also whoever gets Harper, their future is the brighter one. But um, I, but, but the, the Phillies Giants, have a young The class. Giants still got a, a president of baseball operations that is the best in the league, arguably. Mm -hmm. So that might help in the signing of Bryce Harper if yeah, he goes to the Giants. Yeah, and they still have Bochi, who's one – they still have Posey and Crawford and Bumgarner for the time being. Like Bruce Bochy's a future Hall of Famer. I don't think there's any question about mm -hmm. that. Buster Posey's probably a future Hall of Famer in his own right. Madison Bumgarner, I think, is hands down a future Hall of Famer just of his and also, in series alone. And also what we have to think about, too, is that the Giants have the funds for uh, compared to the Phillies to, in the near future, like to build teams, to make trades and – they have more flexibility when it comes to that, so it may be something that Harper's thinking about too. Maybe they should. Uh, maybe Bryce Harper should think about just playing bad, and so he gets a Bobby Bolina like contract where he gets a million dollars for like the next fifty years. So there had been talk about the Giants trading Mass and Bumgarner because he's on the last year of a very team friendly deal before he gets paid a mega salary. Would that be a move that Zaidi should make <laughs> so early in his tenure with the Giants, or do you think that's something you don't want to do right away? You know, um, maybe trade him before the deadline. He's a numbers guy, season. so if the numbers say in his head to do it, you kind of got to trust him, right? I mean, yeah, and I, you got to remove the feelings. Usually, the fans aren't like fans of a team are not numbers people, but this guy's track record speaks for itself. So I would trust the guy if I was a Giants fan. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, but when you look at the numbers and you remove your feelings and emotions, uh, Giants fans might think, okay, we could get a lot back for Bumgarner. He can really, really uh, step up a rebuild. We could get maybe one or two really top young pitching prospects, maybe a, a position player prospect in addition. I think you're, you'd be looking at three or four big-time prospects for a deal because Bumgarner's still young. He's a World Series MVP, a three-time World Series champion. He single-handedly won a World Series for. He's given up the one team. run in the World Series in what, like six or seven? He games? started in Game Four of the 2010 series. That one went to five. He started in the 2012 series in Game Two, and that was a sweep. Then he played two games in games in Games One and Five in the World Series in 2014, and then saved in seven. Yeah. In game seven, which was a five inning save. People haven't forgotten. So obviously, and he gave up one run in all that time. And he mm -hmm. pitched all, he pitched over, he pitched a complete game in one of those games in 2014, and that was a shutout. Right. So he obviously has one run in the, in the, in the World Series he's given up. This is crazy. And I would say like what, 30 innings pitched? Mm -hmm. The ZRA is 0. 0.25. That's, <laughs> that's insane. That's, yeah, he is right now in in uh, in the modern day the best postseason pitcher of all time. In in modern yeah, in day. terms of yeah, in those numbers, I mean, and in performance too, just overall. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at him; he's borderline unstoppable. He just has a different way about him that puts him above the rest. Like the classic Clayton Kershaw, Mass and Bumgarner uh, debate 
really starts and ends with World Series because look at they both get frustrated. They both get um, they both physically and mentally get frustrated. You can see it in them. They easily get frustrated, but when it comes to the playoffs, one of them has it and one of them doesn't. And right now, Kershaw doesn't. I mean, this the the games in the World Series speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because he played in crucial games and gave up a lot of runs. He's been – Bumgarner has been phenomenal in the playoffs. It's it's like he's good during the regular season, and then he becomes a different beast in the playoffs. But what do you say we go to a break? We come back. Let's talk about uh, actual free agents right now um, throughout baseball. Who are the top guys at each position who we think that – kind of may, maybe be some players on the radar, maybe under the radar who could be difference makers. Um, I don't think we'll actually talk about which teams they might go to, but we'll just talk about the players in general. We'll do that when we return. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you then. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. And welcome back to the GSFC Baseball Podcast. We just finished talking about Zaidi being the president of operations for the San Francisco Giants, leaving the general manager position for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And now we're moving on to the free agent market, and we're going to see uh, any of the crucial players. We already talked about Bryce Harper, so mm-hmm. that speaks for itself. Benny Machado speaks for himself. Do you want to talk about him a little bit more, though? Yeah, Manny Machado, uh, other than Harper, I mean, I think, He's the biggest name. I mean, he is the biggest name. Not, I think. Um, Him and Harper are both twenty six years old. So you're looking, which at, is crazy. Well, you're looking at the years to come, future wise. That is actually pretty crazy because you don't normally get two guys that are this good that are this young in free agency, especially that, are, that have played multiple years in the break in the big leagues. Usually by this time they maybe played one, maybe two years in the in the big leagues with a bunch of years in the minors, but this, these two guys got out of the minors awfully quickly. Absolutely. Especially Harper. What was he? 19 when he started in the major leagues? Well, nationals were kind of desperate for a, a spark. So they kind of rushed him, but it turned out to be in their favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Machado, uh, do you think that he'll be worth the money that he will eventually sign for? I don't know. To, well, he's a great player, no doubt, but he's kind of a head case, is he not? Well, I guess Harper is a head case too, when you think about it. But not as I feel like Machado is more of a head case. Machado doesn't run hard sometimes. He's kind of dirty. I would I would say that Bryce Harper, even if he might be a little bit egotistical um, or a little bit brash in his approach, I think he's he gets, more. He gets a lot of unnecessary ejections. Yeah, and he's a fiery guy, but I think he's. I'm not worried about him at all if I'm a baseball fan, like if my team is going after him. But for Machado, I am because we've seen this guy time and time again on the biggest stage when he was playing for Baltimore even. I mean, he's just known as – it's what Christian Yelich said. What did Christian Yelich say? That he's known for being a dirty player. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, that's – it's one of his peers talking about it, right? Like – Bryce Harper, has he been a hothead? Yes. Did he fight Hunter Strickland? <laughs> yes, well, Hunter Strickland he did. Hunter threw at his hip. <laughs> that was pretty intentional. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, what I what I see here is I see Machado being the one player between the two that could be more of a problem. I'm not worried about that with Harper. But Machado, I'm just not sure, man. Uh, he kind of did that stupid thing in the game against the Brewers. In the I mean, it's the World he kinda, Series. He kind of kicked the... The guy's leg. It's a league the championship series. It's a World that Series. That was a really that was just that was so unnecessary. He didn't have to kick his leg like that. And you're wearing spike cleats. You could have easily 
like accidentally spiked him. And then and he acts like he didn't do it. Like I'm just not I'm not with that personality. Do you remember when he threw the baseball like he was pitching I forget who was pitching at him, but then he um he swung and threw the bat away and it was intent he was trying to get at the pitcher, trying to throw the bat at the pitcher. Yeah. It was a couple of years ago. But it's like I don't like want that, that guy leading my team, you know. It just there's some things that just you don't need that's completely unnecessary and what Machado has done in the past can be considered unnecessary. So Machado sounds like I don't know if the Dodgers are going to bring him back. Um, I don't think he'll stay. I think uh, he'll get. He'll, I think he'll go the highest bidder, and I think the Phillies will be that team. Is that where you see him ending up, or do you think that he ends up somewhere else? If he doesn't end, if he doesn't stay in LA, I, I'm not so sure he will. I'm saying Philadelphia. Yeah. Any dark horse team? I can see the. Mm, maybe the Yankees. Maybe they even, don't really have. The, I, can, they I, don't can, really, I know I it's see, weird to say, but they don't really have the money. I know, but I can see the Marlins also kind of pushing for him too, because Derek Jeter is that kind of guy that would push for a guy like him, a shortstop, especially. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about some other ones. Patrick Corbin, uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. A lot of people think that he's the best pitcher on the market. Um, Eleven and seven this last year. 200 innings pitch, 246 strikeouts, uh, ERA of 3.15, a whip of 1.05. That's very, very strong numbers for Patrick Corbin. What do you What do you think about? He's only him? 29. Like a lot of these are super young still. He's a lefty, and like you can average 11 strikeouts per nine innings. And he did this that ERA. And Whip was doing that in a home ballpark that is very friendly to hitters. Absolutely. So those numbers could even be better if you're buying Patrick Corbin and, that, and you play in a better that, ballpark. When you see that at that ballpark, it's wide. Yes. And there's a lot of, like, home runs-wise, it's pretty kind of brutal. But when it comes to getting base hits, yes. oh, it's cake. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit, it's, I mean, we know, Arizona – the dry air, the ball flies around that park. Um, so it's very impressive when a pitcher can put up good numbers because you know that translates to great numbers elsewhere. Where do you see a landing spot for Patrick Corbin? Well, who needs pitching more than anything? I think the Yankees would probably push for him because I know I keep saying mm-hmm. the Yankees a lot, but they push in the free agent market, especially when they're needing pitchers. And this team needs a better. Um, a better rotation and Corbin might be that guy maybe um, like we were talking about like, the White Sox still going after Harper maybe they go after Corbin as well because they have the money for it mm-hmm. and you also look at the Cubs they could add that to their rotation um, he can honestly go anywhere yeah I'm looking at um, potential spots uh, it sounds like the Nationals are a popular place for Patrick Corbin you know they will have I feel money like losing, available. I feel like losing Harper will put a damper on going there because they're no longer a contending team. Mm-hmm. He's, about, he's, he's going away from the Diamondbacks. Don't you want to go to a championship contender? Don't or, you want to go to the American League where you don't have to bat? <laughs> unless you're like a pitcher who rakes. Like Mad Bum. We got to stop talking about Mad Bum. Or Kershaw um, can hit. Kershaw can hit too. Um, a lot uh, of people can hit. A Granky can hit really well. Yeah. Well, pitchers can hit now. Especially in the National League. The National League West. National League, you have to. (laughs) But the National League West is has like a has a monopoly on good hitting pitchers, I feel like. Because even if you look at the Giants, Samarja can hit the ball too. He can really smack the ball. I mean, he was a division one football player, so he's a great athlete in general. But let's let's move on to more of the uh, free agents though. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh we got Corbin going probably to an American League team because he doesn't like hitting. He's Mm -hmm. he's pretty he's pretty public about that. And uh, but another um, this guy's kind of old, but uh, Josh Donaldson, yeah, that's third a big baseman. One. He had he has had some nagging injuries, but in a short term contract, like two, one to two, year, maybe in three years, he could be a bit of a he could be a huge factor. Yeah, he's a big time player. Where do you see him landing? It's hard to say. When he's healthy, he's really good. But yeah, it's especially injuries. with a, with an unhealthy third baseman, um, well. Un- unhealthy is a strong word, but like you know, he's still injury prone. Yeah, um, 
Maybe the Cardinals could be a fit for him. You know what? I can see like the Orioles trying to pick him up because they're they need some more firepower. And after that, he, they I think they need to do better in the in the. You think he would, he the, would any free agent wants to go there right now though? Until they kind of he's offered the money, right? But are the Orioles? It's in all a position? about the money. Are the Orioles in a position to be offering big contracts when they're clearly like in? Do you think full Cleveland rebuild? will resign him? No. Just one season. Maybe, him. maybe they'll resign him. I mean, he'll he's obviously going to test the he market. He was the AL MVP in 2015. I mean, he that's not that long ago. It's not that long ago, but it feels a lot longer because he's been hurt so much. Like it, it's it's hard to trust him. If you're going to spend money. Especially in baseball, you really um, it really dampers your team if that guy can't stay healthy. Because if you're putting so much of your salary on one guy, he's got to do well. But maybe a one or two year deal will get him back on track. Who else we got? Dallas Keuchel, right? He's a free agent. Yeah, true. Um, do you see him going? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I still don't know. Like going back to where, just real quick, going back to the onset, I don't know why the Blue Jays traded him. That was just like giving up on the season. It felt like. Mm-hmm. They they traded him for a prospect, one prospect pitcher. It wasn't even that big of a deal. Whatever. Anyways, continue. Dallas Keuchel. I could see a team like the Nationals being in on him. I could see a team like the Angels being in on him. The Angels, we know, need pitching. Well, he's not a number one on the world on a World Series right. team, but right. he's definitely a contributor. Yeah, he's a decent two or three in a rotation, and we know how valuable those pitchers are on the market. I mean, if you have a, a child that plays baseball and he's a pitcher, I, that's the sport you want him to go, and that's the position you want him to play because. Pitchers make a ton of money on the open market. Even a guy like Corbin, I mean, I can't even imagine what he's going to get. And he's a, real, a really good player, but he's going to get paid probably is top five, mind, top seven is money. Is your mind going to get blown? Yeah, exactly. So Dallas Keuchel, do you have a do you do you see him getting re-signed at all or no? Mm, it's got to be it's got to be a very attractive offer. Mm-hmm. What about Nathan Evaldi? You know, coming off the World Series. Now, I see him getting re-signed. Mm-hmm. He's 29. He's a pitcher. He's um, He had a stellar World Series. Um, he had some dominant stretches in the regular season. And he can go in the triple digits, you know, in miles per hour. And that's kind of rare nowadays. But a, a good pitcher that can go in that, that range. Because you see, like, a lot of guys with... That can have strong arms, but don't have breaking ball type pitches, and yet he he knows how to get those breaking mm-hmm. balls in there. Where do you think he lands? I think he resigns, but if he doesn't, he's probably going to mm, maybe the Cubs. Mm-hmm. The Cubs love three digit pitchers. Craig Kimbrell's an interesting name who's hitting the open market. We saw him be pretty shaky in the playoffs this year. Maybe the one part of the Red Sox that wasn't uh, A plus <laughs> throughout the playoffs in the season, but Kimbrell, we've seen him be such a dominant closer before. I wonder where he lands. Um, I don't know. He had a whip under one this season, which is what would you call that? Stellar? Or would you call that? That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just like dominant. Yeah, yeah, it's under one, but like how much under one? They don't. It does the, the stats I say just says is under one. They could be like under one's really good. Yeah, so. absolutely. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is like he saved forty two games. He and he allowed. Um, he struck out thirteen point point nine per in, per nine innings, and yeah. that's great. But again, that's a closer's like that's a closer statistic, not a actual starting pitcher. I think they'll they'll keep him. I think they'll stay in Boston. Yeah, but if he doesn't go to Boston, I'm going to go on a limb and say he goes to Houston. It's possible. Houston loves taking other great players from teams that beat them. Another reliever that's going to hit the market is Andrew Miller. Now, he's an interesting name. What do you take? What do you think about Andrew Miller? He's a pretty good relief pitcher hitting the market. Yeah, I'm not sure where he goes, to be honest. He was hurt most of the season this year, so he's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So but would we can't, you be worried? We can't uh, forget about his incredible postseason run two years ago, though. 
Yeah, but that was two years ago. Right, but he was banged up this year. But, you know, I mean. Would you be worried about two? two? I mean, Bryce Harper is also hurt this year, too. You know, like players get hurt. We talked about Donaldson, who is injury prone. I think we can all agree to that. Um, But who knows if Miller just got hurt a couple times this year or if he actually is somebody to be worried about, somebody that maybe the way he pitches took a toll on him this year, but. He's an interesting player. I think he's a player that can definitely change a team. Yeah, absolutely. He is a game changer for sure. But I guess and I also have to put it, it depends on what team he goes to. Because sometimes you can't be a game changer if the other players play like the Orioles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with today's Major League Baseball, we see such an importance placed on those middle relievers now that can go like two innings, like the bridge pitchers. The bridge pitchers seem to be like a little bit more valuable than closers lately just because you got guys like Brewers, like Hater on the Brewers, like Andrew Miller. Like we see these guys come in. It can get you from the sixth to the ninth inning. They're pretty valuable nowadays, especially with these new analytics. Look what we saw with the Oakland A's when they, uh, when they, or uh, with the A's and the Brewers did this earlier this year. They start a pitcher, he pitches one inning, and then they change pitchers. I don't like that. I really don't. It's but, pointless. But in today's baseball, there's some, there's something to it, right? Like that's a trend. You know, that's a trend. I mean, I get it. It's kind of like throwing them off going with an opposite-handed pitcher after that, but. Does it really throw them off? Because how many times has like a new reliever came in like with five innings remaining and it's a different handed pitcher and they still play well? Are we heading into that era though? Are we heading into an era where starting pitching is less valuable and then teams have more like guys who pitch two or three innings night in and night out where it's like maybe a starter goes three or four? Are we going to see one day where it's one pitcher per inning? I mean, we're it's becoming pretty specialized, you know? Like it, it really is. And it throws batters off. They don't see the same pitcher three times, four times in a game. It makes a difference. I mean, it, it, there is a point there to be made that it's the way that baseball's heading. Yeah, true. But who knows? I just, I personally just don't like the. It's just like you're wasting time. I feel like. Mm-hmm. So, what do you say we take a break? When we come back, let's talk a little bit of the Gold Glove winners. Last time we did this podcast. We talked about the nominees, but we do have winners now. So we'll talk about that when we return. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast. We just finished talking about the free agent market that's coming up in this offseason. Now we're going to the Golden Glove winners that were announced a few days ago. I thought we were talking about the Golden Globes. No, the Golden Gloves. Oh, the, Go- the Golden Gloves. Um, Dang it. Come on, get your head in the game. We got, we got I, some. I uh, subscribed to this podcast. I thought we were talking Golden Globes. You're a part of this podcast. Why would you? Never mind. You have to Anyways, listen to your stuff. Uh, you want to start with American League? Sure. Okay, American League. We're going catcher first. This one's kind of an obvious choice. Salvador Perez. Shocking, not me. Fifth time in six seasons. Yeah. You want to talk about who the pitcher was? Tell me who it was. No, no. You say. We're going to go back and forth. Uh, Was it Dallas Keuchel? It was Dallas Keuchel. 
His free fourth. agent, Dallas his, Keuchel. His fourth. You think he's going to go into his negotiations like, you know I'm a gold glover, right? Well, he's, he's, he's already a three-time winner before this. So, mm-hmm. so he's, he's going to be like, you know, I'm, I'm still sh- I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be a factor. But bottom line is, I think it's he's already going to be one of the top pitchers in the free agent market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're looking at first baseman's Matt Olsen of the Athletics. Very his unlikely first, winner. His first golden glove. For, for, uh, very unlikely. If you would have told me that at the beginning of the season, I would have slapped you. I would have went, who's Matt Olsen? <laughs> <laughs> Who else won? Oh, oh Aaron Nauto, He, uh, Sorry, I don't mean we don't need to jump to the National League, but he won again. I thought that was interesting. Um, Shocking no one. Not to me. Simmons won it uh, for shortstop for the American League. Is that right? Anderton Simmons, mm-hmm. yes, of the Angels. For his fourth. Ian Kinsler, his uh, mm-hmm. Angels slash Red Sox since he was... Traded in the middle of that. Alex Gordon, it's, too. Huh? Talk about being traded to the, a horrible team to a great team. Mm-hmm. Angels to the Red Sox who win a World Series. His second Golden Glove. And then another athletic, Matt Chapman. Yes. His first Golden Glove. So both what the, a season both for him. Both of the A's um, uh, Golden Glove winners are their first winners. And Simeon was a nominee for the shortstop, so they almost had another um, infielder as well. Yeah. They had a pretty good defense, just not enough to... Make it to the playoffs, unfortunately. But what about uh, Gordon getting Alex Gordon? Yeah. Another Royals, his sixth, his sixth Golden Glove. Uh, he and Perez are the kind of last remnants of that 2015 World Series team. Mm-hmm. So it kind of shows that those two were very crucial in those World Series. The Red Sox led the American League with three Gold Gloves. Well, speaking of the other two. We got Jackie Bradley Jr. for center field, and then we got Mookie Betts, who might be the MVP of the whole mm-hmm. league for the Red Sox. Yeah, the Red Sox just straight dominating the awards. I mean, and when you win that many games, and you win the World Series, yeah, yeah you're gonna win it was, a lot. It was of a pretty, it was pretty dominant. Then we'll go to the National League. Um, who do you think is the least surprising winner of the catcher? Arenado. I was oh. I was saying National League catcher. Catcher. Oh, Molina. Yeah, his ninth. Golden Glove. Yeah. Him and Buster Posey have been trading off that uh, award for the last couple mm-hmm. of years. Uh, then in pitcher, surprising again, no one, is Zach Gronke, mm-hmm. who I think that's five in a row now. Yeah, he's been dominating. He's probably the best in- in- Not only is he a good pitcher, but he's a really good hitter and a great fielder. So Yeah. he. Well, the Diamondbacks paid him a king's ransom, so basically that's basically how that worked. Yeah, Gronke's great. And there was a tie for first base. A tie, you say? Yes. For his first Golden Glove, I give you Freddie Freeman of the Atlanta Braves, who had a pretty great season all around. Mm-hmm. Who did he tie with? He tied with Anthony Rizzo, who, again, scores his How second. How the heck is there a tie? That's weird. Should be an odd number of votes, you know? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not the, I don't make the rules, man. It is interesting, though. That but Anthony they... Rizzo with his second Golden Glove. Well deserved. He's still playing at a high level for the Cubs. As for second baseman, we don't have a tie. We have DJ Lemayhew. Low um, DJ Lemayhew. Lemayhew. Did I say that right? I said that right then. I said Lemayhew. You said Lemay Lemayhew. Oh, uh, did I? Sorry. But it's all good. His third uh, Golden Glove winner, and he was on a Rockies team that made the playoffs. So good for him. Mm-hmm. He had a pretty good season all around. Uh, actually, there was another. Rocky player, and you already said him. Kind of spoiled it already. Who was the third baseman? Nolan Arenado again. Nolan Arenado is sixth Golden sixth Glove. Straight, I think. And at shortstop, a lot of people thought it was going to be Brandon Crawford. He was the favorite, but it's not. It's Nick Ahmed. Okay, from the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Yes, his first Golden Glove because uh, Crawford has won multiple. That's why people thought he was going to be the favorite yet again. Mm-hmm. And he's still playing at a high level. All due respect to Crawford. But Ahmed takes it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in center field, another Braves player, Ender Inciarte, with the third, uh, his third Golden Glove winner, another Braves player. Braves had a pretty good season. Mm-hmm. So, And again, another Braves player. Who is the right fielder, my friend? I'll let you say the last one. Uh, Nick Marquegas? Yes, his third Golden Glove. So that's one, two. That is three for the Braves. Three, three for, for the, the Sox. Mm-hmm. What about Corey Dickerson? I don't know if you mentioned him, Pirates left fielder. He doesn't. It doesn't say on here for some reason. Pirates left fielder. What the? Okay, come on, you list you. Oh, that's Corey not, Dickerson won his first one. For congratulations the to him, and the Pirates did not have a good season. So, 
It's great for him. So uh, Corey Dickerson, I'd say pretty unlikely. Um, a name that hasn't been in recognition uh, or been a nominated name before. Um, NCRT, not surprised. Uh, for Freddie Freeman, though. He, he's been playing really well, and I, he deserves it. Yeah, Arenado, obviously not surprised. Granky, not surprised. He's probably the best fielder in the game, I can arguably say. He's pretty uh, good. You can put him at third base. Best third baseman in the league, fielding-wise. I want to say, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I feel like Nolan Arenado is the most underrated baseball player in the league. Well, he's on an underrated team in the mm-hmm. Rockies, so I think that just goes with the territory. But like when people talk about who's the best player in baseball, like Trout and Harper come up quickly for good reason. I, it's more of a hitting. It's when you look at the best player in the league, you always look at hitting first. But Arenado hits the ball too, you know. Yeah, like he smacks but the baseball. He, he doesn't make. He doesn't. He's not as. I don't flashy. know. Flashy. I don't know how that can work. How he could be less flashy, but, but he's super it is flashy true. with his defensive plays. I mean, you see him on ESPN all the time with the snags that he makes in the hot corner. So it's just weird to he's me. He's a great player, no it's, doubt about it. It's he just, just he's, weird to me. He's just on a, a low budget team, a low fan base type of team that doesn't really look at it, at the Rockies a lot, and he just doesn't get the respect he deserves. Unfortunately, yeah. But he's still a great player, no question about it. Do you think he should be um, uh, MVP candidate mm. in the National League? I think Yelich had just an amazing season. Mm-hmm. A candidate, sure, Ye- Yelich, candidate, sure. But I mean, Yelich I don't think, should Yelich should take yeah. it. He's been on a. I mean, he, the Marlins really just destroyed their team. Like he was, he he was. They had basically two they had Yelich and Stanton, yeah. all performing well this year. Yeah, so I don't know what they were doing. It looked like they were sabotaging the team mainly. Yeah, they're you know full rebuild. So, um, yeah, I am interested. It was interesting to see those two A's uh, on there, Chapman and Olsen. I mean, they had incredible seasons, especially Chapman. But no one really saw that coming. Like if somebody, even the biggest A's fan, probably would have never said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have a Gold Glove third baseman and first baseman this year." But what we're gonna have season. positives this year, basically. Is incredible what season for. For the eight, unexpectedly good season for them. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, that's all about the Golden Gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to take a short break yet again. When we get back, we'll talk about other news in the Nas- major, base- major League Baseball League of Associations of America. <laughs> and we'll be right back right after this. Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. From MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Listen now. And welcome back to the final segment of the GSMC Baseball Podcast. We just finished talking about the Golden Glove winners of 2018. Now we're moving on to other news. And do you have the other? You have the other news, Mark, don't you? Uh, yes, I wanted to mention that Clayton Kershaw. Uh, the last time that we had our podcast, he was still deciding if he was going to opt in or opt out. Well, him and the Dodgers have agreed to add an extra year uh, to what was left of a two-year contract. But now he'll have a three-year, ninety-three million dollar contract starting now with the Dodgers. So the next three seasons, Kershaw will be in Dodger blue. He will not be leaving or testing the market. Do you think it's a good move for the Dodgers? You know, it's their ace, like, especially in the regular season. They get there mainly because of his pitching performance in the regular season. Um, so, And he's their, the face of the franchise at the moment. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's smart. It's a smart move. And yeah, he makes that team a lot of money. Yeah. So it makes sense. Jersey sales and all that kind of stuff. It, it makes total sense to keep him around. Plus, I mean, even if he struggles in the postseason, maybe even if his velocity is down, he's still a premier pitcher. I mean, I would say at worst, he's even if he's, his velocity is down, he's at worst a top 15, top 20 pitcher. So, And that's saying something. If he's like still at his lowest, he's still one of the best. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So 
Maybe he won't be their ace moving forward. Maybe the young kid, Walker Bueller, will kind of ascend into that role. Bueller has been playing very solid. Yeah, his postseason, on top of his regular season, was kind of really helped impressive. them get through to the World Series, in my opinion, with his World Series, with his postseason performances. Yeah, but um, at worst, at worst, Kershaw's your number two. At worst, for the next two, three years. So, yeah, but he's he'll probably be their number one for I yeah. halfway through the season to see how that goes. He'll definitely be the number one in their rotation. Who yeah. knows if he'll yeah, absolutely be their number one pitcher or not? Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Um. So we we heard recently there is some. Some news, some rumors that Harper turned down the ten-year, three hundred million dollar contract from the Nationals. Do you believe that? Do you believe that he was offered ten years, three hundred million? And if I, I just don't think he wants to be a part of that organization. I think he's just ready to try something different, try a new scenery. Like he, I think he saw Stanton's contract with Miami. He was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to put my team at risk like that. Or he just doesn't want to play for them anymore. He yeah. doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to play them for ten years. Or he's going to wait for four hundred million from someone or something. <laughs> he might. He might get it. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't. If he gets it, mm-hmm. because it's one of those things where, like, if Stan gets three hundred, what twenty five million? Yeah. And Bryce Harper, I feel like is a better player than Stanton. Yeah. Uh, Harper can get that. Yeah, I think Harper is. He's more marketable than Stanton too, in my opinion. So he's. When well, you, you think about know Stan's not liked in his own team. Well, town. when you think about when you think about how much players are worth, you have to think about not just their on-field performance, but their off the field. Like, how many jerseys can you sell? Like, how much can you make off of the likeness of that athlete? Like, Bryce Harper, wherever he goes, well, his jersey will be sold out for months and months and months. Like, if he goes to the Giants, if he goes to the Phillies. You won't be able to get a Bryce Harper jersey after like the first day or two because it'll it'll be on back order. Wherever he goes, it'll be sold out. Exactly. I don't know Stan's jerseys were sold out when he went to the Yankees. Yeah, Harper is just a he's a, a name, he's a face, um, and he's a polarizing player. And polarizing players usually sell merchandise. So um, the White Sox have given manager Rick Renteria an extension. So. It hasn't been said how many years it'll be, but he will at least be extended through this season and beyond. Um, what do you think about that move? Um, if they're looking for new players, I guess they just want to keep something the same. Like they're really reaching out. They don't want to spend too much on a yeah. new manager. And He's I think- 129 and 195 in two seasons. Yeah, I think they're just gonna say, "Hey, we're gonna give you a, we're gonna buy you a team that can win. If you don't win now, you're fired." Mm-hmm. That's my guess. That's my prediction. Yeah, um, Dodgers president Andrew Friedman. He talked a little bit about uh, Machado. Machado, you should say. Um, mm-hmm. And he said that. You know, there was no secret that Machado didn't always hustle. He talked about stuff like that. He said that he knew kind of the risks and the personality that he was getting, but the positives outweighed the negatives. Do you think... Didn't really show in the postseason, did it? I think it'll be telling how hard they try to retain him because if they try really hard... He didn't have a good postseason. Yeah, he was okay, but not what they wanted. Of they, course, what they needed, what they yeah. needed from him was something more. And they, he, he, what he can do, he could do so much more. It's proven that he could do so much more, but he just didn't show it. And he was throwing cheap shots at players on the other team. I think it'll be interesting to see how hard the Dodgers go after retaining Machado because if they go really hard, then maybe there is some truth there. But let's be honest: if they don't really go after Machado after giving up so much in a trade for him. It might they might be thinking what maybe other GMs are thinking is he's just not worth it. He's just not worth the the headache. But um, it will be interesting to to watch. How about um some injury news? Lance McCullers, pitcher of the Houston Astros, he's going to miss the 2019 baseball season as he undergoes Tommy John surgery. Do you think that's a big blow for the Astros? Um, yeah, I think just losing anybody at that stature is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know if you would call this, like, the end of their run. Or maybe it's, yeah. like, I, I, it's they really still have hard to a pretty sell. young core of Bregman, yeah. Altuve, and uh, a bunch of other players that they have, uh, Correa. So, yeah. um, 
But the Astros, they could be without McCullers and Keuchel. If they don't retain Keuchel and he leaves, they might need to mix it up a little bit with the pitching staff. Although, the Astros do have some arms in the in the minors, some guys that are looking to break through. I think what we've seen over the last few years from the Astros is how incredible they've built their team with young talent. So I would not be shocked if we see one or two guys enter the rotation next year for the first time for the Astros and really see them be dominant and see, and people will probably say, wow, the Astros, they lose a couple pitchers, but look at these young guys that they brought in. So that's how I see it. The Astros have been super smart in their decision-making and personnel uh, decisions over the last few years. Um, I think we can agree to that. Has there, I don't know if there's been a better team in terms of that, in terms of building a team. Oh, absolutely! Like they—they're really committed to that. They're really on project. another planet. Yeah, yeah. they—they're they're the most patient team. You they hit say. home runs with Correa, Bregman. Like those guys are are big time. So, and no one would have thought that what three years ago. Other than that, I think that's all the news for this week in Major League Baseball. As we are in the off season, anything else you'd like to add, Jeff? Mm, no, I think that should do it. Okay, well, let's sign off. Please join us next Wednesday again as we talk about. Uh, all baseball news as we are in the off season. Even though it is the off season, there's other things going on like football, uh, basketball. There is notable baseball news, and we will be here to give that to you. So join us next Wednesday, of course, and check out the GSMC Podcast Network if you are interested in other stuff, other sports, uh, non-sports. We have content for everybody, so check it out, and maybe you'll subscribe to another one of the podcasts that you enjoy. We we would really like that, actually. We would really appreciate it. All right. So we'll see you next week. Yes. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music. Music from sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.